What's going on everybody? This simulation is of the 2020 Miami Hurricanes against the Boise State Broncos. These two teams have never faced one another, so I thought it'd be a good chance to get a good look at these programs that never face each other and they don't have any games scheduled. So we'll just take a look at it. Miami has played in Boise. In 2006 they played in the MPC Computers Bowl and they beat Nevada, so they have been on this field. But obviously, if you guys don't know, Boise State has the blue turf. Very interesting. A lot of really cool things, really interesting things about it. But I want to get to the game. I'm excited to see how Miami does here. Boise State has a quarterback in Hank Bachmeyer. Had a really good freshman year. So that'll be a challenge for them. It's a program that always wins. You guys know about Boise State winning games. Shout out to Boise State fans if you're here. Freshman Jalen Knighton gets the kickoff for the Hurricanes here. Get a good look at him. Shout out to everybody that checks out the Dynasty series that we have going on. Jalen Knighton had a really good game recently. Don Chaney Jr. as well. And I like to talk about those running backs because I'm very curious to see how they do. There's an article on InsideTheU.com about Don Chaney Jr. excited about the season. So he's going to have chills. He said he was born for this. Excited to be a hurricane. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how they fit in to the Miami offense with Cameron Harris coming back as a junior. Played that secondary role last year. And then Chaney and Knighton, both highly regarded recruits, Different styles, so it'll be interesting to see how they fit in. It'll be interesting to see how the running game works. Now a handoff here to his running back. With the offense, you see Jalen right there again, number four. Good to see him in there. Be sure to hit the like button. If you guys could hit the like button, be sure to subscribe. It helps out a ton, and I definitely appreciate it. We're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers, so hashtag ITU10K. Let's go ahead and do that. And just a look at the Boise State defense there. Third and one, big big play for Miami here. Uh, sniffed out there by the Boise State defense. Interesting little twist to the offense. Mike Harley gets the handoff. I do think that will happen. I think receivers will get handoffs. I think Mark Pope, I think even D. Wiggins, possibly. Just to get the ball in their hands. Either handoffs or short passes on those sweeps there. So just something interesting to see with Miami's offense. It's a great punt there by Lou Headley. Good to see. We don't talk about the special teams, but you have to like what Miami's combination is with their punter and Lou Headley. And then kicker Jose Borgales, transfer number from FIU. As a grad transfer, a lot of experience, a lot of, lot of success, hitting field goals at a good rate. So that's good to see from Miami's perspective. And this will be a challenge, and I think that's the thing to watch for in this simulation. Again, it's just a sneak peek, just a, just a quarter of action. Give you guys a quick look between two schools that don't face each other. But Miami's defense, not only going up against... A pretty good quarterback, but they return all their receivers, most of their receivers, most of their key guys, and their running backs as well. So certainly a challenge. You see right there, Avery Huff on the tackle, outside linebacker, number nine. I think he's going to be interesting to watch in terms of coming off that redshirt season last year where he didn't play. He wasn't one of the guys where he played less than four games and he got to preserve a redshirt but got in there a little bit like a Javari Harvey for example you know where you get a little bit of action no Avery didn't play in any games taking that academic redshirt focus on that and now he's got an opportunity for a lot of playing time it'll just be interesting to see and he's a guy that if you're looking at guys that really could have used that spring practice he's one that would stand out to me in terms of looking for a lead role 
didn't have the experience in game action and certainly could use as much reps as possible and then they only had the four practices so, so it is what it is again just another one of these good receivers for Boise State solid group of guys there's Pat Joyner 52 he's another linebacker that you know, he's played a little bit, but he made that move from defensive end. He's been hurt dealing with injuries. Kind of slotted in that middle linebacker spot, and he'll play behind Zach McLeod unless there's a way he can show he's got enough speed to the outside to play alongside McLeod. Enough range where they view him as an asset, whereas it might be tough because of Sam Brooks coming back and Avery Huff, who I just mentioned. But either way, you know, Pat's looking, he's probably looking at, you know, playing time, special teams, McLeod's senior year, then next year step over, step in as a starting middle linebacker has to be his mindset. And linebacker's certainly an interesting position, I believe. Because, it, because again, you saw glimpses of Brooks last year. You've seen stuff from McLeod that gives you indications that he can have a good senior year. But also his first three years at Miami, he was in the shadows of Quarterman and Pinkney. Wasn't as productive, dealt with some injuries, played through them, that kind of thing. Now he's And he's played on the outside linebacker spot. Played a little bit in that striker role, but now he slides right into that middle spot. And I do believe he'll be okay there, but there is some question marks. And that's not even considering, again, guys like Brooks and Huff who don't have a ton of experience or any at all with Avery's situation. Then you got Wayne Mesteed, Bradley Jennings Jr., who have experience in some capacity, have not played a ton, but they're coming off seasons where they did not play because of injuries. So I think there's a lot of question marks with the linebackers. However, there are positives flashes again joiner in there again good to see him in there showing flashes he's he showed flashes in the spring game obviously not this year but in the past right when he made that switch to linebacker racked up tackles it gave you indication that he was going to be okay but we'll see how it goes And just linebacker position in general, you can't have enough good ones. I always feel that way because you can you can really sprinkle them in all across all of the special teams units. I think they're so important to have on the team. Just that versatility. I think it's also an attitude thing as well. You have good linebackers, kind of sets the tone a little bit on that defensive side of the ball. So there's Don Chaney Jr. right there, number two. Out of Berlin Jesuit, went to his final high school game. He's having a good game, then he got hurt, so his day ended early. But one thing that stands out to me, not just the production throughout his career, staying there the whole time, but one thing that really stands out to me from going to games is, you know, there at Berlin, you definitely can feel that there's a, he has a lot of support. A lot of people are pulling from him from the program not just his teammates or coaches, but just the whole community over there. He's been kind of, he's been known since he was at a young age, freshman year, that kind of thing. I think even before that, he was, there was high hopes for him. So, and he talked about that when we talked about after the game, just he's got that good support system there. A lot of people pulling for him, which is good for all players to have. So it'll be just, oh, nice shake. There we go. We're getting a little bit of action in this game. Not a ton. That's a nice play, though. D. Wiggins with a nice move. Speaking of articles on Inside the U, that had an article about how his summer workouts are going, working with the NFL wide receiver over the summer. So check that out for VIP subscribers. But anyways, a lot of good stuff going on with the site. Plenty of recruiting stuff still going on. And I hope you guys are liking these simulations. Obviously, drop in the comments 
done a bunch of them, but there, there are schools you have not seen yet that you want to see Miami square up against. It does not matter if it's on the schedule or not. Again, it's just a way to look at these, look at the schools, look at the rosters. Maybe see how they match up. But yeah, drop in the comments. Let me know. This quarter went fast. I know many of you, sometimes you'd like to see more. I've done some full games as well, but here we go. That'll do it. So a scoreless here after the first quarter. Would have been interesting to see how everything played out, but I just want to give you guys a sneak peek. I appreciate everyone jumping on here, taking a look at it. Again, drop in the comments if there's something you want to see. But I just want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Be sure to check out InsideTheU.com. You can follow me on Twitter, at InsideTheU. Take care.